Hello everyone. I hope you are enjoying your Seesaw online learning. I know that I love seeing all of your responses to all of our different book books and videos. And today we're going to read Coral Reef Hideaway. This is the title of our book. And we know that it's the title of our book because of these big letters right here. That's our title. And down here you can see that it says by Doe Boyle. Doe Boyle is our author. What does the author do? The author writes all of the words, and then right next to it says, illustrated by Stephen James Pertuccio. What does our illustrator do? The illustrator draws all of the pictures. And what is this part of our book called over here? That's the spine of our book. And what does our spine do? Our spine holds all of our pages. And then what is this part of our book called? That is our front cover. And last but not least, what is this part of our book called? That is our back cover. I see a clownfish on our back cover. And I also see a clownfish. I see one, two clownfish on our front cover. It is dawn near Papua New Guinea, the western Pacific island north of Australia. The first rays of sun strike the lagoon and the barrier reef beneath the surface floods with light. The clown anemone fish, Perculia, gently stirs the delicate tentacles of her sea anemone home. Anemone is one of our vocab words. You can see a picture of an anemone over here. And this is what's called an anemone fish. Anemone fish live in the anemone. This is our anemone. And anemone is a living plant where fish live. A living plant where fish live. Living in the shelter of its twisting arms, Perculia is unharmed by the stinging cells on each tentacle. She is protected by a slimy coating that covers her mouth to tail. Her anemones would not so easily escape the sting of the anemone. Perculia is safe in her hideaway. Tiny sea animals drifting on the ocean current catch on the swaying tentacles. Perculia nibbles at them briefly, then wanders away to graze on the fine green algae that grows on a nearby coral. A pair of butterfly fish race by Peculia. They too are protected from the anemone's darts. With Peculia gone, the fish rush to eat her anemone's tender purple tips. Fiercely, Peculia charges the butterfly fish. With a swish of their fins, they escape her attack. That's her home. Peculia lives in this anemone. And these butterfly fish were trying to eat her home. And so she scared them away. Soon, the reef is filled with brilliant midday sunlight, colorful pa pairs of ang angelfish, and clouds of yellow damselfish feed among corals, sea fans, and feather stars. A small male clown anemone fish comes to Peculia's hideout looking for a home. Peculia needs a mate, so she allows him to stay. One day, Peculia's mate begins to prepare a nest. Choosing a rock tucked at the anemone's base, he clears away algae and grit with his mouth. He is not the only creature cleaning today. Close by, a coral grouper hangs the motionless, hangs motionless near an elephant ear sponge. Small fish called cleaner rassers swim around them. They feed on his dead skin and tiny crust, crustaceans attached to his scales. Like dentists, the rasses also clean his teeth and gills. Peculiar's mate must be careful. He watches the rasses while he cleans the rock. If they get the chance, some rasses will eat the anemone fish eggs while they are laid. Before twilight, the rock is clean. 
Peculiar's mate rests near the anemone mouth as darkness falls. Now shark attacks and barracudas swarm around the shadowy reef, snapping up blue tangs and parrotfish who have stayed too long in their daytime waters. Pecula and her mate are safe in the anemone. You can see them over here. They're safe from the shark. As the nearly full moon rises over the lagoon, lagoon is one of our vocab words. Lagoon is a large body of seawater where plants and sea animals live in a coral reef. So you can see the coral reef down here and you can see all the animals that live in it. And then up here, you can see the beach and this water. This is the lagoon. It's all the lagoon. All these things live in the lagoon. As the nearly full moon rises over the lagoon, the reef's night creatures emerge like thousands of miniature stars. The coral itself blooms. Squirrelfish and solderfish leave the sheltered crevices and hunt along the bottom for worms and crabs. In the moonlight, Peculiar's mate swims rapidly up and down like a horse on a carousel. He chases and nibs at Pecula. Just before morning, Peculia moves, moves to the clean rock beside her anemone, swimming slowly in a zigzag pattern. Peculia brushes her belly across the rock surface, leaving behind hundreds of glistening orange-red eggs. Peculia's mate swim behind her, fertilizing the eggs as they are laid. For five days... Percula's mate closely guards the nest, chasing away the egg-stealing wrasses. He fans the nest with his fins, providing oxygen-rich water to the eggs. Oxygen. That's one of our vocab words. Oxygen is made from plants and helps us breathe. Trees make oxygen. And these plants down here, they make oxygen too. On the morning of the sixth day, Peculiar awakes and awakens to the sound of rainfall. The nearby island is lush and green because of the rains, but today the rain pelts too hard. The island's river overflows their banks. Mud fills the rushing water. Peculiar hurries to her mate as the rain drums the sea above her. She needs to help him guard their precious eggs. The rain continues. The muddy rivers race down the mountainside. Soon, the water of the reef is blurred with fine brown silt. The silt can choke the coral and kill Peculiar's egg. Peculiar and her mate frantically fan their eggs and keep them clean. They pluck away bits of plants swept, slept, swept along by the murky water. <gasps> murky. Murky is another one of her vocab words. Murky is when water is dirty and you can't see anything in it. Dirty water is also called murky water. So you can see this water. It's very murky. Where else might you find murky water? I know there's a pond by my house. And the water in there is pretty dirty. It's murky. Through the cloud of silt, the wrasses appear. Looking for unguarded nests. Behind them, a pair of butterfly fish search for anemones without anemone fish. They seem to know the silt drives some fish away from their homes. Peculiar and her mate do not leave their nest. Peculiar darts wildly, clicking out a loud warning call to the wrasses and butterfly fish. The startled fish speed away and Peculiar and her mate wait for the tide to clear. The cloudy water. <gasps> cloudy water is another name for murky water. After dark on the seventh day, Peculiar's eggs hatch, tiny and transparent. The baby and enemy fish rise toward the moonlight, riding the ocean current. They feast on plank plankton. Soon, they leave their parents far behind. Peculiar and her mate rest. The anemone wraps its gentle tentacles around them, and the moon pulls the tide quietly over the coral. Okay.